Okay, let's talk about framing. This is how the shot is set up. There's a number of different options. The establishing shot is great if you're in an interesting venue and you want to establish, you want to get the whole venue in a shot. Uh, we then have the long shot and that is great for showing the entirety of a person with some background. Often in vlogging, we will use the medium close-ups. That's the kind of shot that I use uh, for the vlog here and for the video we're recording at the moment. Now the problem with having a close-up, people are like, oh well, why don't we get really close? The problem with that is then sometimes overwhelming to the audience because you're literally right in their face. Now, if you're demonstrating a small product or you're going into detail, close-up works really nicely. So focus is massively important. I see many, many videos uh, from people who aren't in focus, which means they're fuzzy, which means they're very soft. Now the human eye and the human brain always like to make things sharp. So if your videos are fuzzy, it means that A, it's hard for the eye and the brain to work out what's important, and also it makes it harder for the brain to watch. The, the brain is working overload to try and sharpen the image, but it can't because you've recorded it as a fuzzy image. Plus, it looks a little bit unprofessional. If you're filming on a smartphone, the smartphone will do a lot of the work for you. But autofocus on your smartphone will do a great job. Remember, we don't want any reasons for the audience to click next. And a blurry image will give someone a reason to click next. If you're nicely lit, if you're nicely illuminated, it makes you pop out the page pop out of social media. Social media these days, there's so much out there, there's so many videos. If you can make your videos more engaging to watch, that is always a good thing. So you need to illuminate yourself, so light yourself and your objects, providing a consistent light, so it's consistent light across your face. That is the main thing. Shadows are the enemy, yeah? So shadows can bring out the bags under the eyes. Shadows will bring out the wrinkles. If you have a consistent wash of light across your face, you will look much better. You'll look younger, you'll have less wrinkles, and you'll look healthier. Sunlight is fantastic quality, cheap lighting when it's consistent. I like to film in the morning or in the later afternoon so the sun is not blinding you in the eye um, and making you have to squint, but it is nice light. You should always light yourself from the front and from above, not from behind, because you end up looking like a silhouette, and not from below, how they used to light monsters in old fashioned horror films. You're lighting from the front, and you're lighting from above is possible. If you're lighting naturally, make sure the sun is not behind you, otherwise you'll get bleached out. If you're filming indoors, white photography lights are great, much better than domestic lights. The problem with domestic lights is, domestic lights will often give you an unflattering yellow or orange glow. Audio is a massive part of the experience. Maybe your audience are listening on headphones, but maybe not, you can't make assumptions. So having good quality sound will often forgive bad quality pictures. Not that you should ever shoot bad quality pictures, but sound really matters. So audio from your voice, but also audio from music matters as well. Uh, so to make sure you have the best quality audio, you've got to be in a quiet room. If you're in a busy room with other people, all that noise will spill into the microphone and will drown you out. People want to hear you, not the background noise. filming in a quiet room but also filling in a room that's filled with stuff and so empty rooms echo. Echoing sounds strange and can be off-putting for some audiences. And then if you're filming in a busy office put a sign on the door to the room you're filming in saying filming in progress. Quiet please. It's amazing how much that will help people outside remember what you're doing in here and keep quiet outside. Closing the door is great because it stops noise spilling in from the outside. I see it a lot, people filming on their laptops. The problem with the laptop is that it's a very poor quality microphone, it usually sat right next to a fan. 
And so the fan is the closest thing to the microphone and all that fan hum comes into the microphone. So what you do if you are recording on your laptop, I recommend you don't, but if you are, you get a laptop, you get a mic like this which plugs into the USB or plugs into your audio input and that means that the microphone is much further away from your laptop and much further away from the fan. So removing anything that makes a whirry noise, a whooshy noise, any kind of grindy noise, get them out of the room as well, that's always perfect.